Thank you so much. And you can please stay. Okay. And uh, Marcus, please join. So we'll take some 10, 15 minutes for, for questions to the two first speakers. Um, and so while you think about that, uh, I'll, I'll ask the first question. Um, and so can you please elaborate a little bit more on this shifts in hierarchy? Y you talked about AI being creative for other AIs and, and maybe put taking us out of the, the equation. And, 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 and you, Barbara, also talked about sort of the different levels of, of how how you input to to your work, but when so so where yeah how do you, how does it feel? Where where are you and where do you expect uh, yourself well, to be in twenty years? I think the word process. hierarchy is quite interesting because Barbara has already kind of illustrated that um, we've lowered the entry level mm. for people to start playing, but I still think we got to be careful with that. You know, everyone can take pictures with a the camera mm. but most of our pictures are incredibly boring and bad so i still think there's going to be a, you know although the entry level to start playing has been lowered that doesn't mean that all what we're all producing is wonderful art and so there's this you know there's still going to be a real skill and a real value to the people who can use the brush uh, the the camera or these new ai tools and that's going to be uh, and what's interesting uh, for me is is this kind of for something like uh, as you you use some vi word prompts this this is a kind of new style of art where you know dali the art there is not in about visuals it's actually about being a poet it's about you know what shall i tell what words can i use and and you then get this feedback interesting feedback as you it comes back and it's not what i was hoping for and not interesting enough and you change your language that I think is a really interesting kind of mix of hierarchies mm. of mm. sort of um, the 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 wordsmith and the visual right. artist. Uh, yeah, like based on that, I think uh, I mean I started exploring style again a bit, and I thought it was very interesting that you can give like input to something. But I, as you said, what is especially interesting that you can like explore it a little bit further and also add like some prompts to it. Uh, so it's not only you give input and then you have the outcome. It's more like you give input, you have the outcome, and then you continue. It's more like a, I would say like it always reminds me of a ping pong play. You give something and you get something back, and then it evolves. Well, I think that's what's yeah. so lovely about the GAN because the GAN is kind of expressing that powerful interaction between let's try something. Now that's not good feedback, and and the GAN is kind of why well, I think it's a very powerful algorithm for creativity. Is it? It's kind of capturing what we do as human creatives is to try something. I mean, I, I love working with other mathematicians, and we kind of play this good cop bad cop role that the GAN. You know, one's trying things out, the other says no, oh, that's terrible, or that's uh, mm. uh, the the, the that kind of, but I think that's what's happening with the AI is becoming this really powerful sort of tool to, to, to have that conversation. Any questions? Please say who you, who you, what, what your name is and what you do when you're <laughs> I'm Sorrel. I work with uh, community and artist management as well, and I'll also be speaking later. This is it's more of a comment, but um, something that I'm a bit concerned about right now is I've seen it a lot within music that people need like an album artwork or something and they'll be maybe speaking with a designer and getting their rates and then in the end they say like, oh, by the way, um, we've got an AI to do it instead and kind of just feed in another yeah. artist's style or kind of take artist's work without permission as reference. <coughs> and so I'm kind of a bit concerned about the, the financial aspect of that if people in some instances say like, okay, if it's something without a big budget that maybe, yeah, an AI can do as well and it can be good enough what that does for the, the market rates, mm. basically, and how our salary. So, but more of, yeah, that was just kind of adding on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this was actually when I started uh getting, like, because when I collected input, it's not just input I created, it's input I got from, let's say, like, Pinterest or Instagram, and then then afterwards, when I when I was about to publish the first work, I was like, "Am I actually allowed to do it? Like, how is it with the rights?" And I thought, like, and I think a lot of people thought that at the very beginning, and now it's like something people just don't really think about that anymore. But it's still something which concerns me a lot. But I think you have to remember that every artist has been influenced by the art of the past. So yeah. why is this any different? You know, I, I think, yeah, if it's a copy, if you can really recognize, but if it's learnt from, but well, that's what we're doing. So why are we denying AI the possibility of, yeah, looking at the whole of the art of the past and, and moving on to something 
Which, yeah, if it's pastiche or if it's copying, we already have that for human artists. So I don't see why. Um, I mean, you're going to talk about, I've already seen your slides, so yeah. uh, I don't want to sort of preempt, but I think there, you know, maybe we need to change our model of uh, ownership yeah. of, of things. You know, when a, a movie is made, they already have the idea that nobody kind of, a movie is, involves so many people that actually the ownership of, the creative ownership is actually with a company structure not with people because it doesn't make sense but we still are stuck on this idea that the artist is the final yeah i think it's i think you're right but then i'm also thinking i mean you you can take an artist's input and then create something new out of it like how we actually are doing for like a lot of years uh but then if you if you have if you use this technology to basically copy like the artist's style yeah and it's like people identify it as it so then i think that's like a very great great yeah, yeah exactly but yeah. We, we, we all have that we even with um human artists yeah so yeah we have a, m a legal model to deal with that these are great answers because three hands pop like okay. oh. i think there's a microphone because other people uh, yeah. won't be able to hear yeah. oh yeah great yeah oh. lady in the back thank you for what's your name on? oh yeah my name is susan cozell and i am an artist coming from the dance and choreographic background, but I'm also a professor across the way at Malmo University. So thank you for your stimulating talks. Uh, a quick question is whether you have thoughts on non-visual arts, by which I mean dance, performance arts, choreography, the creative arts that don't default to perhaps a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your computer that then produces a visual image. And I'll just say as a, as a prompt, perhaps, that I was involved in a collaborative artwork um, recently uh, funded by Autonom, the, the German funding agency that was asking artists to explore and experiment with AI. They produced a catalog at the end of it where each collaborative team described their process and at the end tried to capture their, their feeling, their stance, their regard for AI. And more than 50% of these collaborative groups requested an AI that could control AI. And I wondered whether this is maybe because the AI was more directly impacting their bodily movement and circulation in space. But I'm, I'm just wondering if you have thoughts on, on some of this. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I never really thought about like uh, that kind of uh, creativity, uh, so... Well, I, I, th I think, um, uh, I mean, one subject I didn't talk about, which is non-visual, which I think has been very interesting, is mm -hmm. music. So I think that music is uh, actually kind of, a, as a lovely suggested, a very perfect medium, because it is quite abstract, it's a lot about pattern, it's it's uh, kind of non-visual. So I think there have been very interesting examples of that. But I think the one thing that um, is very interesting in your choice of the question about choreography, it, it does raise something which is a big distinction between these two uh, fields. Human creativity is very much about embodiment. It's about our senses and our interaction with, you know, our consciousness is about trying to interpret the, the visual, Im the, the mixed input through our senses. And so embodiment is incredibly important. Whilst for an AI, it doesn't really care so much about embodiment. So it might be ask, asking somebody to do something which is Im impossible, which is kind of interesting. So it will could kind of push a, a human uh, dancer to, well, I, I can't do that, but what that I've never even thought of that because it's so unembodied. But um, but I think that's, um, you know, I did a project, a music project. Um, uh, uh, when AI is learning music, it always starts with Bach because Bach is so algorithmic in process. So I did this project at the Barbican in London where um, we um, got a, um, an AI to learn on all Bach's keyboard works, but not all of them. Uh, we held some back and then we gave it one of the English suites and we took pieces out of it. So rather than creating something which was pure AI, we said, fill in the gaps. How would you fill in the gaps? And then we had a hybrid piece. And then we asked the audience to, could they tell so we had a kind of a blue human face and a red robot face and they had to say well i think it's gone ai or human but the, uh, the audience found it impossible to tell the difference the person who could tell the difference was mahana svahani who was playing the piece first of all for two reasons um he knew the piece but not because of that first of all he said 
when it hits the AI, I can't play it because this it's Bach cared about fingering. <laughs> he cared about how to actually play this thing. And the AI doesn't care about the fact that it's got to be actually played by human hands. But the second thing he said, which was really interesting, he said, and I think this is important because at the moment when we're training an AI to create music, we give it music. When we're creating visuals, we give it mu visuals. We're starting to give it language, which is interesting. But he said, you miss a really important data set. Why are the English suites called the English suites? Because Bach loved the cadences of the English language. That was a really important data set for him. He wanted to capture in the English suites the sound of English being spoken. That's why he has the French suites, the Italian concertos. Language and the sound of language was an important data set, which we'd never given it. So when it went to the AI bits, it wasn't sounding like English anymore. It was just sounding like piano music. Um, so, so I think that's kind of interesting that we're, at the moment, uh, we have general intelligence, which allows us to, to take influences from so many different places, which are hugely not relevant to the particular medium, but are, are actually strongly influencing that. And at the moment, AI is very, we're training it within its own particular realm of uh, activity. I mean, that's why it was interesting seeing the kind of nature and the geometry. There's trying to mix sort of styles, but uh, still visual, but, but then having the, set of the words coming was really interesting. Sorry, that's too long. <laughs> no. <laughs> Another question? Hi there, uh, Jeanette Ginslow. I'm a screen dance maker and media artist um, and an erstwhile scholar. That's why I'm here. So a question for you guys. Um, my uh, knowledge about AI is, is I'm entering into the field, put it that way, um, to become or to find a new creativity. But this question of being more than human really uh, is really is a curiosity because I did a lot of research last year looking at how how these machines tag images and in fact they're done by humans. So uh, you know then I start to think well then the machine is more than human because initially is this I could ask the question is this only done by humans now or has this now changed because the machine is learning more and more and how different is that to the word prompt? How human is that? Well, I think uh, you, you've raised a really important point, which is, in a way, this is, is it more than human? Because it's learning on human data. So isn't it just a, a kind of interesting new mirror uh, or an interesting new microscope or telescope to look into what we've produced already and to realize other human possibilities? So, so I think that's, it is very interesting that, um, you know, it's producing things which still are recognizable for us because it's, you know, that's why we have an emotional response to art produced by AI and we kind of feel cheated a bit by that. But we shouldn't do because the AI is just learning on our own emotional world. So, of course, it's going to produce things which emotionally stimulate us. Um, and that's what's, you know, but we're starting to see a sort of synthetic stuff being produced by the AI, which it can learn on again. You know, it can produce and it will start to take a journey which is, uh, uh, going away from the human. and Even in the case of AlphaGo, you see, AlphaGo was given human games to play, but then uh, uh, DeepMind said, y you know, what? Maybe, maybe we can get it to, to learn by just using its own games, synthetic games. So it didn't give it any human games, and it produced AlphaZero, which is tabula rasa learning. It just gives them the rules of the game and said, okay, off you go. That was far superior to AlphaGo. In AlphaGo versus AlphaZero, AlphaZero won all the games. So we were leading it astray by giving it the human games to learn from to start with. And of course, you know, that's the worry that we're giving it so many of our biases, our, um, you know, the bad things about humanity. Maybe we should let the AI actually start doing things without our human input. Maybe it will come up with a better kind of ideas and solutions and, and be less racist and bigoted. And, uh, that's being brave yeah. again. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one f more question before coffee all right so um my question is actually uh, are we actually killing the artistic genius at this point um will we um i mean we actually said that ai will uh, kind of uh, leave people uh, working in in uh, uh, easy to uh, automate kind of jobs out of the working place mm. but when i hear you guys i'm also feeling like there is not going to be any more Da Vinci's or oh, no, no. or Bach or because AI will always kind of be better. 
No, I, and for me, I don't think that's true because, mm. for, partly because um, I was interested. You actually use quite a little amount of data to learn on. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, and in a way, I think that's what protects the great artists. Mm. There isn't a lot, you know. They chose Rembrandt because there are a lot of portraits. So I think the 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 you know the the, the artists you mentioned. I don't think there's a threat to the the top tier. I think the real threat is the middle tier. You know, the composers who aren't don't become Bach, but go on to do uh, music for corporate videos or um, for video games or you know that's a you know really interesting. But actually, video games. An AI creating music for a video game is going to be much more powerful because it can react on the fly to the players. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't a human has to write things which can be used in multiple ways, but an AI is going to be able to write bespoke music for you. So I think my fear is for the this kind of second tier of the people who aren't the the Bachs, the Shakespeare's, the 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 the, the, the second tier which actually is um, perhaps more replicable. Yeah, I think it always also depends, like as you said, like how to use this technology. I mean, there will be a lot of people who are exploring it, and now it's accessible accessible to a lot of people. But I mean, there's still a few people who are using it the right way, uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's my yeah, opinion yeah. about it. Yeah, I mean, there will I also like how you define artistic genius. It's also very interesting because I mean. Yeah, no, all good. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Barbara Schussmann, <laughs> Marcus de Soto, thank you so thank much. You.